everybody thank you for coming to our Memorial Day service I would like to welcome our select board Pembroke Memorial Committee and American Legion Arthur Briggs Church host 143 my name is Elaine Crudup and I am a member of the Pembroke Moore Memorial Committee as well as the co-chair of the Pembroke military support group I've been asked I've been asked to take us through the activities of this Memorial Day Linda Osborne, who has been the woman in charge for many years, is having a bit of a difficult time health-wise right now, and I have been asked to fill her shoes, which is not an easy task, believe me. We do love Linda. With the help of Dave McPhillips and Kathleen Keegan of the Memorial Committee, Mary Whitman from the Veterans Office, and Paul Duvall from the American Legion, we are able to have this program today. I would like to begin by mentioning some very special people from my town that we have lost this past year. Lynn Whitley, Pembroke Public School teacher. Richard E. Nickerson, DPW Highway Department, DPW Water Department. Elaine West, Pembroke Public School teacher. John Stagno, Pembroke Public School teacher. Mary Molin, Pembroke Public School teacher. Madeline Lynn Sheehan, Friends of the Pembroke Council on Aging, Arthur Wilcox, Pembroke Public School Custodian, Anna B. Smith, Friends of the Public Library. We take a moment of silence, please, to remember those. Thank you. I would like to invite Pastor Frank Goodrich from the Pembroke Assembly of God Church to do the invocation. Ian. You it. Oh. Think about it right there. Good morning. Can we bow our hearts in prayer, please? Gracious Heavenly Father, on this Memorial Day, we pray for those who have courageously laid down their lives for the cause of our freedom. May the examples of their sacrifice inspire us to live selfless, to the selfless love of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the families of the fallen troops today and fill their homes and their lives with your strength and with your peace. In union with the people of goodwill in every nation, strengthen us to answer the call to work for peace and to work for justice and thus seek an end to violence and conflict around the globe. We ask all these things in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Look. 
Thank you. We are now going to have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Ben Meehan, followed by Proclamation, which will be read by Sterney. Yeah. Natalie Ciciotti, I'm sorry. And then we will have the National Anthem by the wonderful Pembroke High School Band following that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Fact. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas, while the nation was still recovering from the Civil War, people of cities and towns across the country gathered to honor the soldiers who had given their lives, celebrating a first decoration day. And whereas, after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all, men and, all the men and women who fought and died in all American wars, wars and conflicts. And whereas, throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts residents have fought in wars and conflicts to, effect, to defend our safety and ways of life. And whereas, their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas, it is appropriate that all Massachusetts residents remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Laura T. Healy, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 27th, 2024, to be Memorial Day, and urge all residents of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate for it fittingly in its observance. Given, given the um, Executive Chamber of Boston this 27th day of May in the year 2024 at the independence of the United States, States of America, the 200th 247. <laughs> 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 So thank you so much. We are now going to have the selectmen's address. The Honorable Stephen Sikiotti, Vice Chair of Pembroke Select Board. Good. Shut. Sorry. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our Town Memorial Committee for orchestrating this event. I also want to thank our Town Manager, Bill Chenard, Police Chief Rick McDonald, all our first responders, and everyone who contributed to making our Memorial Day commemoration possible here at Pembroke. Thank you also to everyone for attending and to those who wish to share and appreciating the meaning of this day. A special thank you to those brave veterans among us who answered the call of duty and to our Gold Star families for the ultimate sacrifice made. And so let us begin with a moment of silence for those individuals who made that ultimate sacrifice. Thank you, everyone. 
As Ronald Reagan once said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. This fight for and protection of freedom Reagan speaks of transcends the American political spectrum. It is not a mere rhetorical flourish, nor some meaningless philosophical concept. For us to talk of and value this idea of freedom so highly, and for it to weigh so heavy upon those who bear protecting it, and for it to carry such a high price, it is more meaningful and real than most things we can point to. And it is most real for those brave men and women who answered the call, dedicated themselves to, and paid the ultimate price for it. They shouldered this grand burden, grounded in those American ideals from our nation's great experiment in freedom. So why are we here today? It is often said that all gave some while some gave all, and today we solemnly honor those who gave all. We're not here to have a happy Memorial Day. We're here to have a meaningful Memorial Day. The question then becomes, how do we make this day meaningful? How do we extract meaning from generations of sacrifice? We can begin by attempting to comprehend the enormity of their sacrifice. Many of us are unlikely to fully grasp it, but we must endeavor to do so. Then we appreciate the ideals for which they sacrificed. As we return home today to our friends and loved ones and sit down to a bountiful meal together, let us also reflect on the long legacy of bravery and sacrifice that has afforded us the freedom to enjoy those comforts. But honoring their legacy should not be confined to one day a year. I often look to the Stoics for timeless wisdom, and it was Lucius Aeneas Seneca who once said, He who is brave is free. I wholeheartedly believe this. It is woven into our very culture when we call America the land of the free, home of the brave. Freedom bestowed upon us by those who paid the price to protect it will elude us unless we too are brave. We must all exhibit bravery in the face of adversity, in the face of pressure, in the face of injustice, and so much more when it comes to our community and our nation. We must further perpetuate a culture of this, not just for the fruit it bears us as individuals, but because one day, for this or the next generation, the call of duty may come around again, and we must be ready to answer for it, like those who have come before. So let us truly honor, not just in word, but in deed, those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Let us uphold their legacy by honoring the great value of the gift so many have bestowed upon us throughout time. Let us do this with giving some pieces of our own bravery and sacrifice toward the whole of our community and our nation, and weave those deeds into and toward that grand tapestry and legacy of bravery and freedom. In conclusion, it is said to watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. I believe this applies to nation, to a nation and its culture as well. So for our nation and culture, let our thoughts be toward bravery and let our destiny always be toward the values of freedom. Thank you again to everyone for sharing in this day and to those here who have uh, who, those here whose loved ones paid the ultimate sacrifice, we extend our deepest gratitude. Thank you, and I hope we all have a very meaningful Memorial Day. Thank you, Steve. That was wonderful. We're now going to hear from the high school band once again. They're going to do these service songs. I'll call out the branch of each military service. If you could give a wave uh, when your branch comes up, we'd like to recognize you. United States Navy.
me. United States Coast Guard. United States Marines. States Air Force. Thank you. Great job. Once again, our address today is going to be given to us by Richard Wall, U.S. Air Force, Pembroke Police Department, Chief, retired, and a member of the American Legion, Arthur Briggs Church, Post 143. Well, good morning. Good morning. Hey, good. Some notes prepared. Pretty much Steve covered everything. It's tough to follow a guy like him. So I think I get rid of that, that. Plus you're better off. So we're just gonna wing it a little bit. You all know why we're here. I'd like you to take a look at the flags. It's flowing, symbolic, the stars and stripes. It means a lot. Shows us we're the greatest country in the earth. And we've been uh, working on that for almost 250 years. And it's at half mass today in respect of our fallen sailors and soldiers. A lot of symbolic stuff. Now what I'd like you to do is close your eyes and still visualize the flag. See it flowing. And I want you to think about your loved one, your soldier or sailor who didn't come home. That if you have trouble with that, we have three gentlemen up here. That made the ultimate sacrifice. Private Matt Bean, Lieutenant Ryan McPhillips, the specialist Jesse Crudup. Think of that as you're visualizing the flag. Because that's my reminder every day of the people that, that made that sacrifice. Okay, um, and open your eyes and look at the flag again. Now, instead of looking at the stars and stripes, think about the fabric. 
thousands and thousands of interwine pieces of thread. All different colors, red, white, blue. And then they're all woven together, make a very, very strong cloth. So let's close your eyes again, visualize that flag. I want you to think about those threads, the thousands and thousands of threads, red, white, and blue. Red being symbolic for valor and bravery, white, purity, innocence, blue for vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Those are symbolic of our veterans that didn't come home, these guys. That's how I think of that. That's how they describe. Bam. All pulling together thousands and thousands of veterans to make our military the strongest and greatest on the planet. So you can open your eyes again. That's my reminder every day of what this means. So it's an exercise. An exercise needs practice. If you do that, when you see flags and towels, and you think about these guys every day, you honor them. You honor their parents. You honor their family. Don't do it while you drive. <laughs> and if you get a chance, most of the flagpoles in town have been dedicated to a fallen soldier, a fallen sailor, a fallen airman. Check it out. See if there's a plaque on there. And if you don't know who they are, look them up. Because that's why we're here to enjoy our freedoms. They did that for us. So what else can we do? Pray. Pray for their eternal rest. Pray that may always find comfort. And pray that we find peace that they died for. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. That was great. Awesome. Veterans, I'd like you to prepare to decorate the monuments. American Legion Commander Stan Carita is going to read the names. He's the leader, sure. Sure. He's the Civil War. Nathan B. Bishop, Anzel S. Barney, Anzel W. Brown, Edward Bosworth, Lucius E. Chandler, James T. Cummings, James B. Curtis, Robert H. Cornell, Charles C. Clark, Jacob Curtis, Marshall M. Chandler, George H. Floyd, Alfred G. Howe, okay. Alden Howard, John Jones, Calvin S. Magoon, yeah. Marcus M. Reed, Iron F. Stevens, Henry T. Stevens, Abel O. Stetson, George M. Withrall. World War II, one. Arthur B. Church, Carol R. Shue, Leonard R. Turner. World War II, Clarence D. Wainwright, Jr., George B. Northrop, Robert B. Carter, Theodore White, B. Everett Turner, Frederick Moorhart, Arthur Mounts. Korea, K. Nelson Handy. Iraq, Ryan McPhillips, Matthew A. Bean, and Jesse Crudup. Oh, nice. You may now decorate the monuments, and we will have taps.
I'd like to thank Marley Knox and Grayson Glass for doing the taps. That was really nice job. The high school band is now going to perform a musical selection for us. You're a grand old flag and America's out today with benediction again by Pastor Frank Goodrich and then a musical selection God Bless America and I hope you'll all join along by our great band. Thank you very much. Have a great and safe day today. I really can't begin to tell you what an honor it is to come and pray for uh, the families of our fallen heroes. Um, our culture is kind of messed up. Heroes are looked at like uh, football stars and basketball stars and hockey stars and, and really the men that and women that were mentioned today uh, and the men and women that are here that have, have served our great country, you truly are the heroes. And so we're not going to just pray for you today. We're going to commit as a, as a family and as a church and as a society to keep you in our prayers every single day. Um, going forward. Can we, can we pray? As our nation pauses today to remember those in, in the military who have given their lives for the freedoms that we all enjoy, we pray that you would have us all look to your, your strength, Lord, to comfort us and to guide us. Be with all who serve in our armed forces. Bless them and their families. Grant your loving protection for them. Let peace prevail among all the nations, O oh God. Especially let your mercy rest upon our land, even as we acknowledge with thanksgiving in our heart your past goodness to this great country. If it is your will, preserve the lives of the men and women in uniform as they defend our citizenry. Most of all, God, we pray that you would turn the hearts of all, all the military and civilian alike, to your holy word where we can find true peace, true peace for our souls that surpass all our understanding. Move us to know, God, to take hold and to treasure your saving grace on this day and every day going forward. And the peace and hope for eternity 
We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you all. Have a great day. Remember those that we have lost. Hug your families and enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs>